Hey, welcome. Uh, this is part two in a two-part series where we're looking at cylindrical and spherical coordinates. In part one of this video, we looked at cylindrical coordinates. In this part, we're going to go ahead and we're going to explore spherical coordinates. So cylindrical coordinates are analogous to polar coordinates in two dimensions, but there is another way that we can represent points in space, and that's via spherical coordinates. So let's go ahead and let's quickly talk about what spherical coordinates are. We'll draw some pictures to go along with it, and then we'll wrap up with an example or two. So, in spherical coordinates, we can represent a point in a three-dimensional coordinate system using three different coordinates. Rho, which is going to represent a distance, and in this case it's going to be the distance from the origin to the point, so that's different than R in cylindrical coordinates. Theta is going to be the same angle theta that we used in cylindrical coordinates and in polar coordinates, and a third angle, phi where phi is going to be the angle off of the positive z-axis. So let's go ahead and perhaps think through what each of these represent via a picture. So let's go ahead and let's get started with a three-dimensional coordinate system. From our three-dimensional coordinate system, we can go ahead, we can label our axes. So we'll have our x, y, and z-axis. And let's choose some point, perhaps, in the first octant. So I'm going to say, let's pick this point right here. And to get a better feel for where exactly this point is in the first octant, I'm going to draw a perpendicular down to the xy coordinate plane. All right, great. So let me actually go ahead and label the projection down in the xy coordinate plane, as that might be helpful a bit later on. So this point down here is going to have an x coordinate of x and a y coordinate of y, and then projecting that point up to the point in question, it's going to have the same x coordinate, the same y coordinate. But now that we're in three space, it's also going to have a z coordinate. Okay, so basically, if you think about what x, y, and z represent, x is the distance from the y, z plane, y is the distance from the x, z plane, and then z is the distance from the x, y plane. Very similar to normal two dimensional Cartesian coordinates. However, now we want to start thinking about a different way to represent this point, the point x, y, z, in terms of a few different distances. All right. So, I guess a few different measurements, not necessarily distances. So the first distance that we're interested in is going to be this distance rho, which is a distance from the origin to the point in question. So that distance right there is what we're going to call rho, and we're going to learn how to convert between rectangular coordinates and spherical coordinates, but basically it's just going to be a distance formula. So we're going to have either rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, or rho is just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The next measurement that we're interested in is going to be the angle theta. And the angle theta is exactly the same as the angle theta in polar coordinates. So it is the angle measured off of the positive x-axis. So when I'm talking about the angle theta, I am referring to this angle here. Right? So we've got a distance and we've got an angle. Right? Now, this third angle, this angle phi, or phi, is going to be the angle that stems from the positive z-axis down to this blue line. And just for the sake of cleaning things up a little bit, let me actually make this blue line dashed. So the angle then, um, before I go ahead and draw the label, the angle, let me actually move for a label row. Right, so that angle is now going to stem off of the positive z-axis and hit this line here. So that is our angle phi. So we can also represent this point in a three-dimensional coordinate system in spherical coordinates as the point rho theta phi. All right. So basically a distance from the origin and then a few different angles. Right? Now, the reason that it's called spherical coordinates as opposed to something like cylindrical coordinates, is that if you imagine just taking a constant value of phi, sorry, if you imagine taking a constant value of rho, not phi, what you end up with is you end up with a sphere because you have a whole bunch of points that are a fixed distance from the origin. So that's why we might call it something like a spherical coordinates. All right. 
So on these next couple slides, there's quite a few conversions from spherical, spherical to rectangular, from rectangular to spherical, from spherical to cylindrical, and then from cylindrical to spherical. We're going to look these up as are needed. However, should you feel so compelled to write these down, feel free to pause the video and copy these down to your notes now. Um, we're not going to be using a lot of these throughout the semester, but they will come back up, especially as we get into the end of chapter 14 and perhaps into chapter 15 as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started on example 39 then. So here, we're asked to convert the point x, y, z equals 1, 2, 1 into spherical coordinates. And I've gone ahead and I've actually given the conversions from rectangular to spherical coordinates. So we can go ahead and we can use these and kind of begin playing around with them a little bit. All right. So let's think about some things. Um, we don't necessarily have to plot this point and label everything, but I think it might help if we did have a picture to go along with our thought process. So since it's our first one that we're seeing, let's go ahead and let's draw the picture. Um, let's plot the point and then we can go ahead and we can actually talk about each of our values. So we could actually talk about um, rho, phi, and theta. Okay, so I'll start by labeling my axes, x, y, and z. And from here, we can go ahead and plot our point. So we're going to come over two on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, and two on the z-axis. I'm going to use a scale so that each tick mark is a half. So instead of just coming out two on the x-axis, I'm going to come out four tick marks. So I'm coming out four on the x-axis, and then I'm going to go over two on the y-axis, and then I'm going to go up four on the z-axis. So just for a frame of reference, let's go ahead and draw some dashed lines in here. I think that'll help us visualize exactly what it is we're looking for. Alright, so there we have our point plotted in space. Let's go ahead and let's label our point. Okay, so a couple things that we want to find from here. We want to go ahead and we want to talk about rho as being the distance from the origin to the point. So let's start there. I'll find rho in blue. And let me also make it a dashed line. All right. So this value for rho. It's either rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, but since we're talking about a distance, we can just solve for rho by taking the square root of both sides. And we'll have rho is going to be the square root of the x component squared is going to be 4, plus the y component squared is going to be 1, plus the z component squared is going to be 4. So rho is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So all that this is saying is the distance from the origin to my point is 3. Okay, so we're a third of the way there. The next thing we need to do is we need to consider the angle theta. Now remember where the angle theta comes from. If we're looking for the angle theta, that is the angle formed by the projection of our point down into the xy plane with the positive x-axis. So that is this angle here. And the relationship between theta and the point given in rectangular coordinates x, y, z is tangent of theta is y over x. And that comes from just some simple right triangle trig. So tangent of theta is our y value divided by our x value. So we have tangent of theta is just 1 half. So what this tells us is that theta is going to be arctangent of 1 half. Okay. So we've got our value of theta. Um, we can't simplify this, so it is not an exact value. So we'll just go ahead and we'll leave it as theta equals arctangent of 1 half. So now we are 2 thirds of the way there. The last thing that we need to find is we need to find the angle stemming from the positive z axis 
to our point. So it's kind of hard to see, but we can kind of imagine there being an angle that starts at our positive z-axis and then bends forward or bends out of the page to this dashed blue line. And that's the angle phi. And now we just need to think about how phi is related to x, y, and z, and the formula is presented up above. So this angle phi is arc cosine of z. Well, z is just 2 divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. But if you think about it, that denominator is really just rho. So since we've already computed rho, we don't need to worry about taking the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared because we know that rho is equal to 3. All right, next, all we have to do is label our point. So we know that we can rewrite our point in spherical coordinates. as rho theta phi is going to be equal to 3 arctan of 1 half. And for the sake of space, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Arc cosine of 2 thirds. So I can grab the bottom of my P. All right, so we've got our point labeled in spherical coordinates. Cool, easy enough. All right, the very last example we're gonna look at is example 40, where now we're asked to find the equation of a cone. So the cone, x squared plus y squared equals z squared in spherical coordinates. So this is gonna require a little bit more thinking but we should be able to do it without really getting too bogged down by some of these calculations. So let's go ahead and let's look back at some of the conversions. So we're trying to go from rectangular to spherical. So it's this set of conversions that might be helpful. However, we also have spherical to rectangular. These set of conversions might be helpful for us also. So let me go ahead and actually grab these and I'm going to include them on the page that we're working on. So I'm actually going to make these substitutions in this equation, and let's just see what happens. So now, if I replace x with a rho sine of phi cosine of theta, that's going to give me a rho squared sine squared of phi cosine squared of theta. And I'm going to need a bit more horizontal space to write, so I'm going to move this down here. Plus, I'm going to replace y with a rho sine of phi sine of theta. So this will become a rho squared sine squared of phi sine squared of theta. And that's gonna be equal to z squared. Well, I'm gonna replace z with a rho cosine of phi. All right. So what this leaves me with is a phi squared sine squared of sorry, rho squared sine squared of phi times cosine squared of theta plus rho squared sine squared of phi sine squared of theta is equal to a rho squared cosine squared of phi. It's kind of a mouthful there, All right? But just looking at this, there's a couple things that we could do. We could actually go ahead and we can divide through the entire thing by rho squared, and that'll leave me with a sine squared of phi times cosine squared of theta plus a sine squared of phi sine squared of theta is equal to cosine squared of phi. All right, so from here, we're getting into some good stuff. Um, let's actually go ahead and let's divide the whole thing through by cosine squared of phi. Maybe that'll be helpful for us. So if I divide the whole thing through by cosine squared of phi, I have a sine squared of phi over cosine squared of phi, that's going to be tangent squared of phi times a cosine squared of theta plus we'll have another tangent squared of phi times a sine squared of theta 
and that's going to be equal to 1. All right. Well, if we factor out a tangent squared of phi, we're left with tangent squared of phi times a cosine squared of theta plus a sine squared of theta. Well, cosine squared plus sine squared is a Pythagorean identity and is equal to 1. So really what this reduces down to is just tangent squared of phi equals 1. Which turns into a couple different things. So what we end up with is we end up with a tangent of phi is equal to plus or minus 1. And we actually end up with a couple of different angles for phi. So this equation, this trig equation, actually has solution phi equals pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and then it does continue around forever. So this actually has infinitely many different solutions. So we could actually say this is something like pi over 4 plus, let's go pi over 2, yeah, let's go pi over 2n. However, if we think about the restrictions that are placed on phi, we're talking about the angle from the positive z-axis outwards. So really, we're only worried about the angle between 0 and pi. Let me check something real quick. So we're really only worried about the angles between, yeah, 0 and pi. So because we have infinitely many of these solutions, we can reduce these down to 2, because there's only two solutions between 0 and pi. And that's going to be phi equals, let me write it out in two different colors, phi equals pi over 4 is going to be our first solution, and phi equals 3 pi over 4 is going to be our second solution. So that right there is going to be the spherical representation of the cone given by x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now, just for some bonus fun, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the graph of this in spherical coordinates. So here we have our three-dimensional coordinate system. Now remember, our two solutions were theta equals pi over 4, or sorry, phi equals pi over 4, and phi equals 3 pi over 4. So think about what phi is. Phi is the angle off of the positive z axis. So essentially what you're doing is you're starting at an angle of 0, it's pointing straight up, and then you're coming out pi over 4 radians. So think of what pi over 4 is, that's about 45 degrees. That is 45 degrees. So really what you have is you have a set of points that are all meeting, that are all off from the z axis, by an angle of 45 degrees. So if you think of drawing them just perhaps over the y-axis and over the x-axis, you have these two lines, but remember, the um, value theta, I guess our graph is independent of that value theta, which means that if we were to graph the cone, we would imagine sweeping the cone all the way around the z-axis. So we would end up with something very similar to this. So that's going to be the top half of our cone. However, at this point we're only halfway there, because we still have another angle for phi, which is 3 pi over 4. And if you think about what 3 pi over 4 is, that's 135 degrees, or it's going to be 45 degrees past 90 degrees. So if you're thinking, start here, this is 45, this is 90, another 45 is going to have you down here. So go ahead and draw a line that corresponds to phi equals 3 pi over 4. And let's draw this one right under the y-axis, and let's draw another one, kind of imagine it as being right under the x-axis. And now we've got these two lines drawn. Now we can go ahead and think about what the graph is going to look like. Well, again, it's going to be independent of the angle theta, so we can imagine these two lines as sweeping all the way around the z-axis.
So here we have the graph of the cone that was given by x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which when we converted it from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates, we were just left with the cone given by phi equals pi over 4 and phi equals 3 pi over 4. So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for today. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to let me know or leave a comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.